and gentlemen, Craig Ferguson. enough that's enough please everyone please it's it's beginning to, it's beginning to sound like the warm-up comedian before I come out might have said something like give me thunder <laughs> give me thunder Give me thunder. Don't, don't, don't give me thunder. Give me a light spattering of rain. <laughs> spring rain on a summer's day. Oh, no, that doesn't make sense. If it was spring rain on a summer's day, it would be summer rain. What the hell is wrong with you, man? <laughs> what are you, pop? It's a great day for America, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see, did you see the President Obama's press conference earlier tonight? I watched it. We were live, so I watched the press conference before. <laughs> it was great, actually. I loved it when he said that stuff. And, um, <laughs> made some points there that I went, eh. <laughs> Do you know this? Amy Winehouse is planning to release a perfume. <laughs> I'll just say that again. Amy Winehouse. Oh, the Winehouse. You put, it's lovely. You put a little one behind your ears and your wrists and your ears and stuff, a little in your crack pipe. Who the, who the, who, who's going to spend money to smell like Amy Winehouse? If, if you want to smell like Amy Winehouse, go and sleep in a dumpster for a week. It's free. Also today, astronauts went on a spacewalk today to change the batteries on the outside of the International Space Station. And they hope the spacewalk will answer some key questions like, who put the battery thing on the outside of the space station? <laughs> what you put on it? It's in space, you moron! Put the battery thing on the inside! Do you know what? I hate to get all Andy Rooney on this as well. <laughs> but, but you know when you used to be able to get things and you just open them up, put batteries in, and then close it up again, it was easy? And then you put a screwdriver in it, and now you have to unscrew things to put batteries in things? What the hell is... You know what that is? That's lawyers, that's what that is. That's the hand, that's a cold, greedy hand of a lawyer. My client uh, was d damaged emotionally by batteries that fell out. <laughs> Yeah, there's a Supreme Court ruling on this or something about putting the screw into the batteries thing. <laughs> My God, I am turning into Andy Rooney, am I? <laughs> ah! It's very, very sad news today. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like being the one to tell you this if you don't know, but the Taco Bell Chihuahua passed away. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I know, it's sad. She was 15 years old. She'll be put to rest tomorrow in a crispy tortilla with a scoop of syrup. No, no, she won't. That's like, I, all right, that's enough. It's awful. I'm sorry. I know, I, that, was, that was mean. I'm sorry. Adios, Taco Bell Chihuahua. Off to hump that big leg in the sky. Ah, that's not right. Anyway, today's a big day if you're a gangster. Now, I don't mean a 16-year-old with his hat on sideways and your pimped-out mom's Camry. I mean a real <laughs> gangster. 75 years ago today, the gangster John Dillinger was shot by G-men. Now, when I say G-men, I don't mean gorgeous men or gay men. <laughs> I mean government agents. That's how they talked in the 1930s. Say, Mac, uh, a couple of G-men are on our tail. Yeah. That's right, G-men, yeah. Do you mean gorgeous men? Oh, I wish. No. <laughs> <laughs> Gorgeous men are on a tell. Why are you driving so fast? <laughs> the G-men were the government men. <laughs> I'm sorry for laughing. I keep seeing a lady over there who's really pissed off at me. It started with the Taco Bell Chihuahua and now she's, now she's just... <laughs> 
<laughs> She's just really bad. Um, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll go like this. I won't look. All right. Anyway, sorry. You know, you shouldn't get hysterically amused when someone's angry at you because that way it leads to, you know, two marriages and all sorts. All right, I, it's not funny. I'm very, I'm, I'm very contrite. Right? Uh, yeah. I forget what I was talking about. Oh, yeah, yeah, gangsters. Because I'll tell you what I was thinking about. There's a movie out now about uh, Dillinger. Uh, it's called Public Enemies with Johnny Depp and Christian Bell. Yeah, yeah. Now, I haven't seen it. I saw something close to it, uh, something I rented in a hotel room once accidentally. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to love this. Uh, yeah. yeah. Something called uh, Pubic for Enemies. And uh, it was uh, Johnny Deep and Christian Mail. Da -da -da. Directed by Michael Mann, the other one. Anyway. All right, all right, I wouldn't do that anymore. Anyway, the. Uh... Anyway, Johnny Depp, uh, no, the, the John Dillinger, I mean. In the early 1930s, John Dillinger was known as public enemy number one. And you know who I feel sorry for? Whoever was public enemy number two. <laughs> It's very tough to get respect when, you know, you're like, don't mess with me, I'm number two. Why are you laughing at me, Mac? Number two. No one will ever touch number two. Number two will make a big splash. <laughs> uh, don't, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> give me thunder. I... Uh, <laughs> you know the old timey gangsters had great names though, like Babyface Nelson and Pretty Boy Floyd, names like that. Names given to them by J. Edgar Hoover, who was the head of the Bureau of Investigations that later became the FBI. And some historians say that Hoover dressed like a woman, that he was in fact a transvestite. <laughs> Now, it's never been proven, but on a dark night here in L.A., you can see his ghostly form on Saturday night. <laughs> Trying to get a ride home from Eddie Murphy. <laughs> D. Edgar Hoover probably came up with the gangster's names himself. He said, Sir, we have to catch a bank robber named Floyd. You mean Pretty Boy Floyd? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I guess, Pretty Boy Floyd. And then after that, we have to catch uh, Dillinger. You mean Bedroom Eyes Dillinger? <laughs> His name's John, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Johnny Depp plays Dillinger in the movie. Do we have a picture of... Uh, Johnny Depp's gorgeous, of course. Do we have a picture of the real John Dillinger, though? Oh, oh man. Yeah, no, that, he didn't use moisturizer, that dude. <laughs> John Dillinger, this, have you ever heard this rumour that he supposedly had, had a 23-inch penis? Oh. I'm I didn't make that up. That's, that's a true rumour that was made up by somebody else. <laughs> if that's true, though, why did another gangster get called Lucky Luciano? That's what I don't understand. <laughs> we have to take a break. We'll be right back, everybody. We'll to the big show where everybody's happy. Um, I'm trying to be more down the line with this whole late night thing. Welcome back, everybody. How about those things? Don't you think sometimes, everybody, some things are like other things? So we're having on the show, we're having a puppet popularity contest. Uh, it's, it's, it's trying to say, yeah. And uh, so far, I don't know if you can see there, we got the, uh, the, uh, the, the peg is uh, at uh, 15 million. And, uh, the <laughs> Mamu the Dinajad of Iran up there at 7,000. The, the gay German penguin's good, the sheepdog's good, the shark's doing, you know, disappointing. But um, <laughs> I just thought, you know, these are the finalists here to, for the most popular puppet, and the votes are on the internet. You know, if you want to vote on the internet, go, go right ahead. And the, um... <laughs> 
the uh, what's the website for the voting again? It's on the bottom there. There you are, cbs.com slash late blah blah. blah. <laughs> anyway, I I uh, thought I would add another um, <laughs> another puppet uh, as a late entry into the <laughs> The, 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 because I was just so impressed by his work earlier on. I'm going to put the waving crocodile in as the... Uh... I mean... You know, what, what he, you know, what he lacks in syncopation mouth-wise, I think he, he makes up for in his cheerful wave. A cheerful wave can often get you out of lots of dangerous and embarrassing situations. And try and, try and remember that, young people. You know, when, you're, when you find yourself in a crack den at the wrong end of a drug deal, you know, when the guns are pointed at you and everyone's mad and, oh no, you're going to get it now, sucker, and everything. That, try this. And then everybody will kind of go... You know, you're right. Come on. <laughs> All right. Uh, do we have time for emails? Yeah. Um, this is from Jordan in St. Charles. St. Charles is in, uh, in America. Uh, is it? Missouri. That's in America. All right. Uh, so there you are. Uh, Jordan says, Dear Craig, do you pick out your own clothes or do you have an assistant pick them out and lay them out on your bed? I don't even have enough lighting for the studio. An assistant? A bed? Clothes? All right. Uh, let's see. Um, do, 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 do. This is from Brett in Clever in Missouri. That's a nice name for a town, and it leaves you a lot of living up to do, though. I mean. Uh, Brett says, uh, doesn't a lightning rod on top of a church show a lack of faith? <laughs> no, no. Actually, this was a famous test case in France on the eve of the French Revolution, where the citizens of the town of Saint-Omer wanted to put a lightning rod on the church. And the king of France said, you can't have that. If God decides to zap your church, that's the way things are. And they were defended successfully in their court action to put a lightning rod on the church by a young American lawyer, whose name was Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Don't applaud me. I'm Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> And you're probably thinking, Craig, is that true? Yes. <laughs> and then you think, Craig, did you look at that email before? And I'm thinking, no. <laughs> and then you think, Craig, are you really that clever? And I'm thinking, yes. <laughs> but if you're really that clever, how come you do fart jokes? Because I like them. <laughs> But only stupid people do fart jokes. <laughs> maybe I'm stupid then. Maybe I'm stupid, maybe I'm smart. Maybe I don't give a rat's ass what you think. How about that? <laughs> don't you judge me. <laughs> we out of time? Nah, you're out of time. I'm good. Uh, <laughs> oh, this is from uh, Carly in Glasgow. Uh, but the Glasgow that's in uh, Virginia. Yeah. Trust me, you, you won. Uh, <clears throat> Dear Craig, says Carly, did you know the last, uh, that a dime has 118 ridges around the edge? I counted several times. <laughs> Go take a break. We'll be right back, everybody. We'll be right back. My first guest tonight has got his sketch show, The State, which is uh, available on DVD for the first time in, in 14 years. I think 14 years ago they didn't even have the DVDs. They, no, we used to watch shows on the kinemascope. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know what that is, but that's how we watch the kinemascope. Yeah! 
Please welcome my friend Tom Lennon, everybody. Tom Lennon. Tom. I have officially, I have officially become your Paul Lind. Why? I feel like I'm just always on the show. I'm always sitting over here making well, faces. That, that we want you, we want you here because you look so damn good in a thong. <laughs> Thank you, and I know that it takes one to know one. So they call me Raúl. <laughs> When I dance, they call me Raul. I've been I've been enjoying your musical openings, by the way. Very oh, really? Much. Have you? Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I I do like to sing and dance yeah. and do some jazz hands. You did, know what I'm saying to you, don't you? Of course, of yeah. course. Uh, did uh, did they give you? Did they in fact give you a note to sex up the show? Is that the agenda? Yeah, yeah. We're trying to make it more sexy. Oh, good. A lot okay. of, uh, yeah, go ahead, go on. Yeah, yeah, go. Uh, all right, oh, this is coming out. You know, I didn't know that the DVDs were invented when you... The DVDs uh, were not... This is a... a kinemascope. A kinemascope. Yeah. You put it... What you do is you unroll... Uh, it's a piece of lucite, and oh. you put it in your zoetrope. <laughs> you, you guys have a zoetrope oh, at home. Oh, sure, yeah. we got all the modern stuff here Frank, in CBS. Frank, you're... <laughs> The show is in low def, so yeah, it's yeah, low def. It's a, like it's we're the last show on TV in low def. Really? Yeah, there's, it's us, and I think there's uh, there's something on like uh, NPR. A, yeah. <laughs> I don't oh, like fresh air. Yeah, uh, that's actually on the radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, not. Not. To, I, I mean, I, I hate to be a, a know-it-all because we're friends, but NPR is a radio station. Really? Yeah. I was wondering why the picture was so See? bad. See? Yeah. <laughs> Keep, you can whack it all you want. Just keep whacking it and put a I coat do, hanger. I do still. whack it all oh, I want. That, and that was Terry Gross. Oh, Boom! Yeah. That was Terry. Oh, I thought I, I, thought I was going to land the NPR yeah, no, crowd no, no, and no, no. screw you, NPR yeah, crowd. Yeah. <laughs> no, I would fight any NPR fan in this crowd. No. There's no NPR fans they're in this not. crowd. No, they're yeah. still trying to figure out if the thing about Benjamin Franklin and the... Uh, oh, and the uh, church. Yeah. They're like, that true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm going to Wikipedia that. Yeah, Wikipedia. Out. If you the, Wikipedia... NPR fans don't sound like this, by the way. I don't think. <laughs> no. yeah. that, some of them do. That's, that's the really? popular misconception. Yeah. Really? You go to the South the and sometimes... Yes, yeah, NPR yeah. fans. Well, there you are. Look, there's his... What's that's that? not me. Are you why are you I'm in this show also. Yeah. I know you're in Reno. You know that. I see your legs. Both of these DVDs are out right now. We never oh, got to mention, oh, The State is a wonderful sketch show that we did many, many years ago uh, what was on the, TV. What channel? It was on a, a music television, which is not like NPR. It's a, a channel that you look at. <laughs> um, and it's I, called Music Television. And it was a, a huge hit uh, uh, at the time. Uh, and Michael Ian Black was on it, the oh, guys yeah, who do uh, Michael and Michael. Yeah, he's the other guy yeah. like you. He's here all the time. Our hands touched inadvertently there. Did you see that? Was, <laughs> You you thought it was inadvertently because I did it so well. Ah, yeah. <laughs> nice. Hey, I, are you all right? You have the seizure. Uh, I'm having a seizure. <laughs> Put something. Well, he's having a seizure. So listen, um, I'm all right. I'm all right. All right. I actually did have a seizure. Did That's you really? Okay. I'm just gonna do it. I'm just soaking in it. Hey, we could do some sort of Ben Franklin test with my hand here. Hold this. <laughs> And then, bring down, where's the boom microphone? Is there a boom? There's we don't a, have a boom microphone. Oh, because we could like do some yeah. kind of... What we use instead, what we use instead are legs. <laughs> yeah. Here's sometimes, a... sometimes when the audience at home can't hear me, I have to move my <laughs> leg very, and speak into my shoe. It's the um, get smart school yeah. of a... Why are you doing this? Here's the thing, my hand has actually got a little bit stuck. Oh, okay. But then I just thought it was sort of good product placement. Yeah, no. Oh, that's... Luckily, it doesn't say the name of some show on NPR. It says the name of this show. Yeah. Well, we're kind of on NPR in the sense that we have the same picture quality. <laughs> <laughs> you and I were glass. Yeah. Uh, Where have you been, then? Have you gone, you gone on vacation around this summer? Uh, I haven't done much. Uh, I had a baby. Yeah. Wow, congratulations. Yeah. I have a, yeah. In, in fairness, I don't know why you're applauding. My part was quite easy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and technically kind of fun. 
Uh, so we had a baby. Yeah, um, my you, wife and I, you, first you, baby. You, 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 uh, what, what, what kind did you have? <laughs> you know, like a human baby, you know. Because I was going to say a, a crocodile no, that waves or something. <laughs> That, that was, you gotta love the crocodile that waves. The crocodile, crocodile that waves is yeah, fantastic. Man. People love puppets, you know that? Right. They do. You wanna, see you that, if you want that Reno 911 to do to well. To pop. Yeah. To pop. You wanna get more puppets Get some on kind of aardvark that pops up and says, Hey! Oh. You, see, right there you went right to the, yeah. uh, the I'm the number aardvark. Yes! <laughs> I'm Craig Ferguson, aardvark. Yes! People would like oh, that. Yeah. Listen to them applaud. Listen to them. They're literally, except for the woman that hates you, they're doing a wave. I don't think, I don't think the woman uh, that hates me does actually hate me. I talked to her during the commercial break. You did? Yeah, she just forgot to put her glasses on. <laughs> what, show, what show did you think you were at? There's no wheel that they spin. Should we spin a wheel or something no, like no, that? No, or? no, no. She's very, Let's give she's away tech, something. You must, no, you must pick up. She's, she's very nice. She's very nice. Okay. I, and, and I'm going to talk to her later. She's the second guest. Oh, what? Really? Yeah. <laughs> No, she's not. No, no, we we have it. We have it. We have another guest, and she's third guest though. Oh, good. Yeah, she's a musical guest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, we're out of time. I can't believe it. We didn't talk about anything. The state side on DVD. I love it. Oh yeah, yeah. Get put this in your nah, camera. Put this in graph, your, your, your zoetro zoetro kids. <laughs> Tom Lennon, everybody. We're we'll right My next guest is a very talented musician, very, very talented musician. She's also the host of Bravo's The Fashion Show, which the season finale is on tomorrow night. Now, given that tonight is Wednesday, July 22nd, <laughs> unless this is a rerun, in which case, if it is a rerun, then it's probably not on tomorrow night. <laughs> unless they're also putting a rerun on tomorrow night. But, I mean, what are the chances of that? <laughs> Take a look at this clip here. Kelly's here. Hi, guys. Come, 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 come. What in the hell is Kelly doing at the fabric store? You guys didn't think I was going to leave you all alone for your biggest challenge yet, did you? Look who's here. Oh, my God. My. Hello, bitches. <laughs> I'm back. Please welcome the very beautiful Kelly Rowland, everybody. Kelly Rowland. Hello, Kelly. Hello. Kid. You look lovely. Look at you all fashioned out with your hat Thank and everything. Thank you. I got dressed up for you, of course. You did? Of course I did. I had to slip on a really nice pair of shoes today. They're uncomfortable let, as hell. Let me see. But they're fantastic. <laughs> Can I see them? I can't see. These are. Wow. Yeah. What's that? Is that like disco snake skin or something? <laughs> we'll call it that. Disco snake skin. Disco snake skin. That's fine. Right. Look at that. Yeah, I like it too. Can I see? <laughs> Looking. What? This, this, that, that? Man, come You're on. frightened of snakes? Come on. I do not like snakes. Really? But you know what, though? When I was in Australia, maybe like two years ago, I uh, saw a brown snake. You know, those brown snakes is t one of the ten deadliest snakes in the whole wide world. It is not. Yes, it is. And I was this close to it. Well, you, you shouldn't have been. Well, I, <laughs> well, I was curious. Well, that curiosity killed the cat. I knew you were going to say that. But, it, I mean, I did want to say, you know, oh, my God, I was close to death. I looked death right in its face. Yeah, you, well, you, there's more fun ways to do it than just going, <laughs> going near a snake. That's just, that's just insane. I'll never do that again. Well, you don't have to do it again. You've done it now. You can click it off your exactly. bucket list thing. Yeah. Hey, you know, your co-host of your show, uh, Isaac, was here last week. Don't you love Isaac? I do. Did he mention me when he got he back? He did. He did. <laughs> I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but he has the biggest crush on you. Stop. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I know you're married and all. You know, yeah. Congratulations. And also the whole, the whole straight thing as yeah, well. Yeah, of, of course. I can't believe I didn't even factor that in. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> well, there's the European thing too, so that takes you back. You know. But no, he absolutely loves you. Really? That's nice. Yeah, yeah. No, but... <laughs> 
come on. <laughs> so, uh, the, like, hosting this show now, what about the singing and everything? Well, I mean, I still have it. I just did a record uh, with uh, this amazing French DJ. His name is David Guetta. The song's called When Love Takes Over. It's so amazing. When Love Takes Over. Oh, I love that one. Yeah. yeah. For me, it feels like it's it's fun. I have so much fun uh, performing the record. I just I've been having a great time. Can I ask you a question? You can. It's it's a it's an it's an it's an old white guy question. So bear with me if it seems stupid, right? Listen. When you say you've been doing work with a DJ, right, and you've yes. been making a song with a DJ, see, yes. I. I gotta be honest, I think me and I think a lot of other people, and they're too frightened to admit it, don't really know what a DJ does. Because I what I think a DJ does is he goes, Well, here comes the next record. And, uh. <laughs> so when you when you make a record with uh -huh. a DJ, uh -huh. what does the DJ do in the record? Does he mix stuff together and You know what? There are so many DJs now who are extremely creative and they find I know, I know that, but I just don't know exactly no, what they I do. I got you, I'm trying to explain. All right, okay, you have to okay. Let me explain. All right. So basically now they're producing music, you know, like they'll probably get ideas while they're, you know, doing their DJ thing and, you know, they'll probably put that on a track and they make a record. So like if you're, you're like you're mixing tracks together and you go, oh, you know what would be good? A French horn. And then you go and get a... <laughs> Look, it's just a for example. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then, then you go and get... Do a... not invite him to your wedding. <laughs> No, DJ <laughs> Frank Ferguson, that's just perfect, perfect, that's it. No DJ, no DJ. No, 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 the, no so the, 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 uh, the, uh, they get an instrument then, all uh -huh. right, a groovy instrument. A French instrument, horn, a French French horn, horn they go, yeah. and they record that instrument and put it on top of the existing track, or they create a totally new existing track? They create a totally new track. All right, okay, yeah. well, they're, they're musicians. They then. are, they really right. are musicians, and David is really phenomenal. And he's French, you say? He is French. Sometimes I can't understand what he's saying, but we have so much fun together. Did you, <laughs> did you make, did you make the, uh, the record in France? Yes. Really? We Where? made it in France. In Paris? Yes. I love Paris. How glamorous. Oh, yeah. It was so glamorous. We made a record in Paris. That's fantastic. Yeah, no, no. we had so much fun. Do you speak fun. French? Oh, no. <laughs> so I told you I was completely lost in the studio. Like, he turned to the engineer and said, And I'm like, Get yes, that's a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's fun. See, in, in France, they don't call it a French horn. It's just a horn to them. <laughs> That, there we got the start of something going yeah, okay. on there. Yeah. You make a beat. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, okay. This is getting worked up. All right, all right. Now you do a beat where you go. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, everybody in the audience do it too. We're trying an experiment. What experiment are you trying, Craig? I'll tell you, person that isn't really asking me. I thought, wouldn't it be nice to come back from the commercial break without music or applause? And then everybody went, no, that would not be nice. <laughs> but I think it is nice because, you know what I think it does? It gives you a little break. <laughs> Sometimes you need a little break, like the TV's going, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> buy this, I'm funny, blah, buy things, I'm funny, buy things, oh, it's a drama, I'll find that killer. <laughs> Isn't it nice to just get a moment where we can go, <sighs> and we're going to call that little gap between the commercials and when we start talking again, we're going to call it our time. <laughs> time when we can undo our pants. <laughs> All right, that's enough of that. My next guest is a comedian from Milwaukee. Milwaukee, where they make beer? Yes! <laughs> buy beer, buy beer! <laughs> 
You can catch him next week at the Zanies in Chicago. I've been to Zanies in Chicago. It's the best comedy club in the country. And he's here making his national TV debut. Uh, Dobie Maxwell, everybody. Dobie Maxwell. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thanks, Greg. Thank you. I cannot tell you how delighted I am to be here with you today. This is the best part of my entire day. The few minutes I get to stand here telling you what went wrong. I welcome to my nightmare. <laughs> welcome to my nightmare. I think you're going to like it. If, so, if no one, someone else, somehow, somewhere, somebody is doing worse than you, that makes your day. I can make your month. <laughs> I can make your spring. I have the worst luck of anybody walking the face of the earth. Look at me as your one-man self-esteem stimulus package. Is what it is. It's the thing. Luck is everything. Every day in my life is Friday the 13th mixed together with the Ides of March, and there's always a full moon, and there is no escape. Nobody has luck like me. Let me give an example. I'm the only person I know that has run out of gas in a car wash. Twice in the same week. That's embarrassing, it's humiliating, standing next to my car, drenched to the bone, yelling at the top of my lungs, come around, come around. <laughs> then of course I lock my keys in the car, you know, and it's the closing time and it's a three day holiday weekend. My entire life can be summed up in three simple words, worst case scenario. <laughs> Then, for a little fun, throw in a glitch or a wrinkle or a hiccup, and that's the formula for my life, man. Uh, I've been known to get the finger from leprechauns on occasion. <laughs> Black cats refuse to cross my path. If you're having a bad day, I'll cheer you up, man. I, I have so many unsolved problems going on in my life at any one time. I got a restraining order from Dear Abby and Dr. Phil. <laughs> But I'm here to cheer you up. That's the way it goes, man. Things are you're trying to go good. I have the worst luck with cars. Oh, man, one time, I tell you, I was, I was in a police station paying a parking ticket while I was getting a speeding ticket. Does that make sense to you? <laughs> Another thing happened to me. I was in a fast food drive through line at the busiest possible time. My engine blows. What do you do? Worst case scenario, push it 10 feet, wait. Another 10 <laughs> feet, wait. <laughs> Then I get up to the window and I said, you know what, on second thought, I think I will eat that here. <laughs> and they still got my order wrong. <laughs> oh, squid melt, mmm, and liver strips. <laughs> oh, man, it never goes right. And the thing is, I'm a little brother. Little brother is the worst part of any family to get. Little, bro uh, little brothers are having nightmares right now because we get the thing. My brother, big brother, standing on my chest and he kneels down, takes my arm, starts whacking me in my own head. <laughs> Saying, why are you hitting yourself? Why are you hitting yourself? <laughs> if I would just shut up and take the beating, I'd be okay. But no, because Orca the Killer Whale is kneeling on my chest. Is what I, mean. <laughs> I told him, I said, you're older than me, and if God is fair, you will die before I will. So someday, I'll stand over your open coffin and go, why are you hitting yourself? Why are you hitting yourself? Why are you kicking yourself? Oh, man, I've been in the trick bag since day one, man. I've always been a misfit. My birth certificate has an asterisk. <laughs> I found out my guardian angel, I'm in his no-fly zone, man. <laughs> Thank you. I got my identity stolen a couple weeks ago. Got it back the next morning. <laughs> With a nasty note. They didn't like it either, man. I was walking through the restaurant the other day and I noticed it said, uh, it's the salad bar, if you want a second helping of salad, you have to take a clean plate by state law. I'm thinking, that's all I need with my luck. I'll be doing prison time on a salad violation. <laughs> walking through the prison yard, I know my luck. I'll get shanked the first week in there by the chaplain. <laughs> Twice in the same week. Thanks a lot. Good night and good luck. You're beautiful. Thank you. It was the only thing, because I just thought, hi. <laughs> so, I don't know if you've been watching the show. If you've been watching the show from the very beginning, I'm terribly sorry. Uh, but the... Uh, <laughs>
<laughs> when I was uh, talking in the monologue, I, th I said there was a, a, I thought a lady was angry at me, but it wasn't. It was, uh, this is Victoria and Desiree, and, and I thought it, Victoria was angry at me, but she wasn't angry at me. She just forgot to wear her glasses. Wasn't that right? If you say so. <laughs> Wouldn't you do the bit that I asked you to do? What? That would be easy. Yeah, it would be easy, yeah. <laughs> so... She really likes you. And I you. really like her. And, and, and you're related, aren't you, both yes, of you? Yes, My daughter. I knew that. <laughs> she looks really like you, you know. You look like each other. <laughs> yeah. That happens sometimes with mothers and their children. <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah. <clears throat> so we're done then, really. <laughs> so, um, you guys good then? Are we good? Yeah. Are we good? Say goodbye. We have to run. I mean, I mean, I, I, I mean, are we good? I mean, are we good? You, you like him, right? You know, of a, course. Oh. <laughs> Victoria and Desiree, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow.